Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, what a beautiful evening it is. Shame to go back into the house. Listen. That one bird. He always sings on the apple tree. Almost June. I can't believe it. And June means summer. Our first summer, darling. In our own house. With our own baby. <laughs> You're getting so excited about him? I've been excited. I'm getting impatient. I don't blame you. I wonder what it'll be like. I mean, you and me. You and I. Are you going to correct my grammar in front of our son? I hope that by the time our son is old enough to understand that you will have learned some grammar. Anyways, I was saying, I wonder what it'll be like you and I having a child. I expect everything will be different. I expect so, but things are always different. I used to hate the idea of life changing. Yeah, I remember. But I don't anymore, darling. I've gotten so that I trust tomorrow completely. Because yesterday and today were so perfect. That's a nice compliment. A nice feeling, too. Well, I hope you're right. I am. It's time that little bird was asleep. What time is it? It's almost nine o'clock. <gasps> so late? Don't you think it's time this little bird were asleep, too? Mm, tomorrow's Saturday. Oh, good, then we can sleep late. You want to go back into the house? Mm, not particularly. Nice out here. Uh-oh. Phone's ringing inside. Now, who could that be at this hour? Mama? No, she just phoned an hour ago. Maybe she's getting extravagant in her old uh, age. Oh, not a chance. She said she was coming back up in the morning, and unless something's happened. Hello? This is Norton Residence. Hello, hello. David, you goop. What if it's somebody? Who you want to speak to? Who is it, for heaven's sake? Missy Norton. Yes, she here. Give me the phone. She's busy now, but she speak to you. Have patience. <laughs> you belong in a lunatic asylum. Shh. He'll hear you. Who will hear me? The man who's calling you. A man for me? I don't know if I want you talking to a strange man in front of your Japanese butler. <laughs> What will he think of your husband? I think he's crazy no matter what. David, who is on the phone? Give it to me, please. Were you expecting a call from a man? Are you jealous? No. Not much. Just to prove it to you. Here, talk to him. Thank you so much. Hello? No, you didn't disturb me from anything much. <laughs> who is this? Oh, Mr. Varney. Why, hello. Mr. Varney? I, I don't know any Mr. Varney. You may not, but I do. He's a theatrical producer. I saw in New York the day before yesterday, remember? No, him. He can't be much of a producer if he didn't spot your dramatic talent. What's that? Oh, no, I was just talking to my butler. He's so incompetent. I... Oh, you're up in Eastbrook. Well, just a second, and I'll ask my husband. No, I've been promoted. Now I'm your husband. Hey, David, be serious. For I'm a moment. serious. I'm very serious. Jim Varney is just down the road a little ways, and he wants to drop in and say hello. He's at the Riddles. The Riddles? That's, yeah. that's the house uh, just over the hill. Yeah. Maybe he isn't as stupid as I thought. Maybe he's going to ask you to be in his theater company after all. That is not the point. All he wants to know is, can he drop in? Well, do you want him to? Oh, I just as leave not. It's such a beautiful night to be alone. Well, I think maybe it'd be nice. After all, he's going to be up here all summer, and since you have such serious mm -hmm. theatrical aspirations... I think right? you're trying to get rid of me. How'd you guess? Go on, go on. Tell him, tell him come over. Oh, all yeah. right. But remember, if he stays and stays after you get sleepy, it was your idea. Yeah, I think women get married just so they can have a husband to blame things on. How'd you guess? Hello, Mr. Varney. We'd love to have you come over right away. Who'd you say? Of course I've heard of her. We, we'd love to have you both. Goodbye. Who is her? Victoria Manners. Who is Victoria Manners? You mean to say you've never heard of her? She's never. a famous actress. The name has a familiar ring. She played the lead in Outrageous Fortune last winter. Oh, that's it, that's it. You don't seem the least bit excited that she's coming over to visit us. I'm not. Why, should I be? Well, I think that a good enough reason would be that I am. All right, if it pleases you. Now, I'm excited. Oh, I'm excited. you. Now, don't. now, come on. <laughs> Let's sit in the living room. I'm tired of standing around this phone like a couple of cigar store Indians. You can sit down, but I've got things to do. For instance? Powder my nose, comb my hair, fill the ice bucket, get some potato chips, 
distribute uh, cigarettes, clean the ashtrays, which you'll keep filled with tobacco. When did you say these people were coming? Right away. Maybe they'd better come next week instead. David, how do I look? Mm. I don't expect you to say I look nice or anything. But do I need to change my dress? I don't think you'll look very different in another dress, dear. That's big help. As a matter of fact, you... You look pretty all right. Now, not bad. Don't tire yourself thinking up compliments, David. I won't. You don't need compliments from me. I married you. Out of pity. <laughs> you had the nicest eyes I'd seen since I was uh, in love with my father's cocker spaniel. <laughs> Careful, you'll turn my head. That's what I'm trying to do. Turn it in the direction of the ice bucket. I, I'll take care of the ashtray. I know I look awful, but I'm certainly glad we vacuumed and thorough cleaned today. Look, darling, Varney and his friend aren't here to make an inspection. It's just a social call. Don't you care what kind of an impression we make? Not the least bit. Uh-oh. Oh, there's the doorbell. I'll get it. Introduce yourself, David. As what? Your husband or the Japanese butler? The butler, of course. Well, hello, I'm... I'm David Norton. It's good to see you. I'm Jim Varney, and uh, this is Miss Manners. Well, I'd have known Miss Manners. Uh, Do come in. You have a charming place here, Mr. Norton. Well, we're just beginning. Needs a lot of work, a a lot of furniture, and a lot of everything else. Your wife tells me you're an architect. What does Claudia do, anyway? Pass my card around to anybody she thinks is a potential client? (laughs) I'm sure you don't need any help from anybody. I like your house. I like it very much. Well, it may sound immodest, but so do we. Won't you sit down? Uh, Claudia will be right in. Thank you. Claudia's here. Hello. Hello. I didn't expect to see you again so soon, but it's it's nice. We think it's nice, too. Hello, Miss Manners. Hello, my dear. We've been admiring everything. Well, I'm sorry I missed it. Jim tells me you're interested in acting. (laughs) Not for the time being. Well, I see what you mean. But after you've had all your children, there'll be time. You still look very young. Have you any children? I'm not married. At least not at the uh, present moment. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, I can understand your being so much in favor of it, with such a handsome husband. (laughs) You'll turn my head, Miss Manners. I doubt it. You mustn't take Victoria too seriously, Claudia. Why not? David is very handsome. Now, wouldn't you all like something to drink? No, not me. We just finished dinner. There's There's something I would like. Of course. Anything. I'd like to see a little more of your house from the outside. It looks so attractive. Do you really mean it? David, why don't you take Miss Manners out and show her the house? Don't you want to? You're responsible for it, darling. Besides which, you're the authority on houses in this family. I'm uh, I'm not making a nuisance of myself, am I? Oh, no, 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 no. On the, on the contrary. As a matter of fact, there's nothing I prefer more than bragging about this place. No matter how modest I may act. (laughs) Brag all you like to me, Mr. Norton. I know how artists feel about something they've created. Uh, We'll be back in just a minute, Doc. That's all right, David. Goodness, she's lovely looking. And she doesn't waste any time, does she? What do you mean? Well, didn't you realize she's making a play for your husband? Of course I realize. And I don't blame her one bit. Uh, Uh... What did you say? Well, she'd be a fool if she didn't notice he was handsome and attractive. And Victoria Manners isn't a fool. And neither are you. Neither am I. A lot of things she is. Now, look, honey. You're not awfully disappointed about not getting a job with my summer theater, are you? I'm not at all anymore. Would you be, if you were me? If I were you, I'd probably be the happiest woman in the world. (laughs) (laughs) Only Miss Manners makes me feel a little as if I had three legs. <laughs> uh, she makes everybody feel that way. Hmm. What a terrible responsibility she has. Well, I don't think she considers it that. Well, say, where's this famous rooster of yours? Asleep on the job. He's a very baffled bird. He never knows what time of day it is. He crows all the time. <laughs> that must be very confusing for you. Besides which, he's absolutely useless around the house. He can't even lay an egg. Well, um... Why don't you get him a hen? We're thinking of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. But David says he doesn't want to start anything. <laughs> we do have a cat and a dog who love to show off. Oh, you make me feel as if I'd been dead for 20 years. That's a funny thing to say. Hello, hello, we're back. We missed you. I didn't, not a bit. Oh, Jim, you must get Mrs. Norton to show you around sometime. Anytime, I'd love to. And now that I've been terribly rude, stolen David away from you, too, and poked my nose into everything... 
I think we'd better go, Jim. Yes, it's a long drive back to town. It's a lovely night. I wish I were driving someplace. Oh, you have no coats or anything? Uh, thanks for letting us drop in, honey. Well, come again, won't Thank you? Thank you. We will. Indeed we will. I'll be in Eastbrook all summer, too. And now I'm rather looking forward to it. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Summer is almost here, isn't it? I like Varney. He likes you, too. Professionally. Wish I'd had a chance to talk with him. It was a funny evening, wasn't it? He certainly didn't stay long. David, she is beautiful, isn't she? Mm, not bad. Such long legs and such a little waist. I didn't notice. You must be blind. I think you would have enjoyed seeing a nice, slender woman for a change. For a change from what? For a change from me. Now, what do I want a change for? For a change. <laughs> Besides, you're not slender. You should say I'm not. Not now. You're skinny. I've always said you could put a little more on your bones. Oh, darling, you're being so sweet. I'm not being sweet. After the baby's born, I insist that you try to keep some of this weight. It's very becoming. Sometimes I think you're plumb crazy. No. Why am I crazy? Here, one of the most beautiful women in America was making a, a play for you, and you won't even admit you've known You're the one who's crazy. She liked the house. Oh, Victoria Mann is interested in architecture. She liked you. And I'm proud of it. Wonderful to be married to a man whom other women want. <laughs> You're imagining things. Trouble with you, David Norton, is I don't think you appreciate beautiful women. Oh, no, don't I? You couldn't, or, you, or you'd, you'd have... How'd you like to take a drive, Mrs. Norton? Me? At this hour? You see, it's a very beautiful night. And I'm very much in love with a very beautiful woman. And there are a few things I'd like to say to her under a beautiful moon. Darling, I didn't mean me. I'm not beautiful. Who cares what you think? I think you are, and that's more important. So here, here, take my hand. I dream of Claudia with the light brown hair floating like a ta do 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 Going on a picnic Sunday? Don't forget the Coke. Remember, any kind of food tastes better with ice-cold Coca-Cola. Picnic food most of all. Whatever you do to celebrate Decoration Day, it'll be a pleasanter celebration if Coke's along. Your friendly bottler of Coca-Cola has asked me to send you his wishes for a good holiday weekend. Hello there, Mr. King. Oh, Mr. Varney. Thought you'd be halfway into New York by now. Well, we're on our way. I just thought I'd tell you what a very especially attractive couple I thought the Nortons were. I know Miss Manners thought David was. Yes, so much so that I'm almost a little sorry I brought her up to the Nortons tonight. Because when Victoria Manners lets her eyes rest on a man for a moment, usually means that more will be said about it, and very soon. Mm, I wouldn't worry about David. He can take care of himself. Uh, we'll find out on Monday. Victoria has already hinted that grass will not grow under her feet on Monday. Well, when you know Claudia as well as I do, you'll know that this story will have quite a different ending than the one you're worrying about. Well, you know Claudia, but I know Victoria. And my bets are on Victoria. She can't win. You'll see. On Monday... Well, so long, Mr. King. So long, Mr. Varney. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> 